Hello and welcome to module 10 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. Uh, so, what we are discussing in uh, several last modules is the uh, collision theory and we are trying to calculate a rate constant. Uh, in the last module what we had covered is the comparison of the rate constant calculated from collision theory versus Arrhenius equation. And we noticed one very important thing that the collision theory is missing the exponential factor itself. Uh, that is the holy grail, that is what we really really want, uh, that is what made Arrhenius that famous. Uh, so, today we are going to see how do we get that exponential factor in collision theory. Uh, this concept is basically called a reactive cross section that we will be looking at today. Okay, so, a quick uh, recap, uh, the Arrhenius equation is uh, k equal to e to the power of minus uh, e over rt. With collision theory what we have derived so far is this equation here. Uh, what you notice that this thing although is temperature dependent, but it does not have this exponential. Okay, so, this thing is essentially your pre exponential, this is actually the A of Arrhenius equation. So, what we notice that A is temperature dependent, A depends as uh, the square root of t and we are missing this e to the power of minus A over rt. Uh, what we will show today, the reason we miss this exponential factor is because so far we have assumed that all collisions are reactive every time A and B will collide, you will get a reaction. Uh, so, today we are going to go beyond that approximation. So, uh, how do we uh, account for non-reactive collisions? That is the question. So, uh, let us start. Okay. So, the way we do it is as follows. First, so uh, think of this A moving forward with some velocity u colliding with b. That is how we derived uh, this whole collision theory, right. And we had approximated u as the average thermal speed. Today we are going to do something more accurate. So, we will start with, with our basics. We are going to write uh, k of u uh, equal to pi r a plus r b square into u. So, this is the uh, equation we had derived 3 modules earlier. Yeah, that if you are moving at speed u, uh, what is your uh, uh, rate of collisions? Great. Uh, we are not going to write away write u equal to root 8 k, k t over pi m. All right, we are going to do something better. Before doing that though, we are going to add an additional factor which is uh, going to improve, which is going to get our Arrhenius factor, which is P r of u. Okay. So, uh, this factor was rate of collisions at speed u and this thing is the probability of reaction if collision occurs at speed u. So, what we are saying is okay, we are having these many uh, collisions per second at the speed u, good, but not all these collisions are reactive. Some of the collisions just A and B will collide and it will remain A and B, nothing happens. Okay. So, we are attaching a probability. We are saying that at any given speed u, you have a probability of reacting. At the end though, what we are interested in is rate at a given temperature. So, how do we calculate that? Uh, this essentially is then a thermal average of k of u. So, what we do is Okay, uh, so, well the idea is you have a rho equilibrium of u, this is the probability uh, of, well probability density to be more accurate, of uh, being at 
the speed u and this is the reactive rate at speed u okay so i am am at a given speed there are two questions what is the probability that i am at given that given speed u multiplied by what is the probability that i will have a reaction what is the rate of having a reaction at that speed u so if i multiply that and integrate over all speeds i will get the net rate at that temperature t and again rho equilibrium of u we derived a few modules earlier is uh, i am just uh, uh, reminding you we derived this is equal to this so we substitute this big equation here and we substitute uh, this equation here okay uh, this is your k of u and this is your rho equilibrium of u i have just written it down multiply them together and i have to integrate from 0 to infinity always remember the limits of speed is 0 to infinity and not minus infinity to infinity that's a very very common mistake okay speeds are always positive there is no such thing as a negative speed in the language of mathematics it's always a, a, a absolute value okay uh, now to make progress i will just make a trans, uh, a variable transformation this is will become very useful so i will transform into energy units rather than speed and the reason is this probability that is here it is just much more natural to calculate in energy units hopefully that will become clear uh, in a few more slides so just allow me a few more slides and hopefully this uh, the reason for doing this uh, uh, variable transformation will become clear so i am going to make this transformation of et equal to half mu u square i can of course find the differential and i get this so i am going to what i am uh, it's a big integral so i will be very very careful check carefully if i am making mistakes or not okay your responsibility so i will take all the constants and put them outside pi ra plus rb whole square that's a simply a constant outside the integral uh, this big giant pi, mu over 2 pi kbt to the power 3 half i have a 4 pi as well let me put all these constants let me put outside pull, pull outside the integral 0 to infinity okay first i note du equal to det uh, let me actually note that i have a u here as well and let me combine u into du i note i have a u into du here so i note u into du is d epsilon t over mu uh, all the constants i have taken outside the next factor is pr and instead of u i will just write epsilon t okay so this is kind of a new function pr of epsilon t it's uh, mathematically not the same you understand i am what i am doing i am converting from u to epsilon t uh, the constants have been taken care of i have u square and u square is 2 epsilon t over mu into e to the power of minus beta and I have half mu u square which is nothing but epsilon t. Okay. So I think I have got all the factors right. Let me just go over this. I have all these constants here pi r a plus r b square comes here uh, this mu over 2 pi k b t comes here and 4 pi comes here all the constants are out integral 0 to infinity u into d u becomes d e over mu uh, I get p r of epsilon u square uh, is 2 epsilon over mu that is here and e to the power of minus beta half mu u square is epsilon okay so i have got this equation i will just simplify this a little bit more so what i will do is i will note that i have a few extra constants i will take these outside so i will get pi r a plus r b square uh, let me just uh, rewrite this slightly differently just to simplify
into 4 pi. Now I have a 2 outside divided by mu square, 1 mu cancels here. Uh, I have a 2 pi that cancels with this 2 pi. So, I am left with pi r a plus r b square 1 over k b t. Now, you notice I have a square root, root of mu here and a mu here that is 1 over square root of mu. So, that becomes uh, a square root of and what I will do is take 4 inside. So, I will get 16 divided by 2 is 8. multiplied by this big integral. Okay, so, you can just uh, double con check with yourself whether the, the all the manipulations are right or not. So, after simplifying I get this. Okay, uh, it is common actually to take uh, this term here and multiply by this term and this is a very important quantity this is called a reactive cross section. Okay, so, I can actually rewrite the same equation here and uh, write it in the language of reactive cross sections. And what exactly is this reactive cross section? Reactive cross section is the probability, it is not the probability I am sorry, it is the area that the particle B has to be in such that a reaction happens. So, I have A moving with some velocity u, what is the area in which B has to be in so such that reaction happens. Okay. So, uh, this reactive cross section area in which B has to be in such that reaction happens. So far we have been assuming that area to be pi r a plus r b square that is what we derived earlier. So, we have been assuming p r is 1. So, now we are going to go ahead uh, and make more sophisticated choices. But first let me uh, convince you that if I choose uh, p r to be simply 1, what happens? I should get the old result back what I had derived in the last module. So, let us prove that. Okay? So, let us assume p r of epsilon is always 1 for all epsilon. So, I have to solve this integral. Now, p r is simply 1. Uh, so, this integral I have provided you here in this integral note that a is equal to uh, 0. So, I just uh, copy from this integral here. I a is 0, so e to the power of minus beta a is 1. So, I have 1 over beta into a is 0 plus 1 over beta which is 1 over beta square which is nothing but k b t square. So, I take this k b t square and I substitute it in the above equation this integral. Okay. So, I have taken this and substituted k b t square and then I simplify a little bit and you notice that one of the k b t's will cancel and you notice that but I have a square root k t here and a full k t here. So, I can write this as 8 k t over pi mu. So, you can go back a couple of uh, last module and you will see this is exactly what we had derived. Okay. So, this convinces us that the choice p r equal to 1 is our old choice. So, let us make uh, better choice now. That choice really does not work because we do not get the exponential. Uh, well, uh, maybe one reasonable choice might be that this reactive probability is 0 up to certain energies. That is the reason we went to this uh, units of energy, the transformation of variables. Uh, so, I am saying let us choose p r to be 
0 if energy is low enough, it is below some given energy epsilon naught which is my activation energy and 1 above it. Okay. So, if your energy is below this threshold, it will not react. If it is above this threshold, it will react. Yeah, so, that is a natural choice. So, let us assume that is true. So, let us uh, do this integral very quickly. Uh, so, this integral what I will do is to break into two uh, components. Uh, epsilon t e to the power of minus beta e t plus epsilon naught to infinity d e t p r e t e t. And what you notice this integral is 0 because p r is 0 between 0 to epsilon naught by my choice. So, I have to integrate this portion, but again I have uh, this integral given here and here a becomes equal to epsilon naught. So, this is simple, this is e to the power of minus beta epsilon naught over beta epsilon naught plus 1 over beta. So, I take this and substitute here uh, and so I get basically this integral now, uh, this equation. Uh, but you notice that this is now a much more complex equation. We actually do not end up getting uh, what we expected as a simple Arrhenius equation. But it is still progress because I do get Arrhenius factor here. Okay. Uh, but we I get something that is a bit awkward. It does not look right. This is actually and experimentally also this is not right. Okay, but we have the reason is that we have made one mistake. We had said that the probability is 1 if your epsilon is above some epsilon naught. But this is not very physical because I have these collisions happening. Uh, sometimes this collision might be a very grazing collision here. Okay, it is R is just uh, it is coming and just touching here like this. And some collisions might be a very head on collision. So, we have not actually accounted for that correctly. Imagine if you are at some energy, energy basically translational energy basically specifies speed. But at a given speed, it is not so obvious what it is not 1 or 0, right? Because uh, uh, if this particle was coming head on, then the probability will be much higher. And if it was just grazing through like this, then the probability is very small. So, uh, I have to account for that. And so, how do we do that? Okay. We are going to do trigonometry. So, let us say uh, I have to get my pen, I keep on forgetting. This is A, this is B, and I am moving with some speed u, and it collides here uh, at some angle theta. Uh, let me say this distance is d, and let me say this distance is a. Okay, where uh, d is nothing but R A plus R B and A is some parameter that we will soon find out. It should vary from 0 to D. 0 is head on, uh, D is grazing. So, the point is I want to find out uh, U relative u relative is the speed along this component. That is the speed I care about, that is the uh, kinetic energy that will be used for reaction. The one that has the perpendicular component uh, plays no role in reaction, so that's, that's, that energy will not be used for reaction. So, u relative, well you guys know a little bit of your uh, Uh, trigonometry that is u into cosine theta. Okay, so, it is less. So, uh, well what we have here is a triangle with this being d, this being a and this being theta. So, this length is uh, d square minus a square. So, cosine theta is nothing but 
uh, root of d square minus a square over d. So, I get uh, my energy that is useful is actually half mu u relative square which is nothing but half mu u square into d square minus a square by d square. So, this is my incident energy epsilon t into 1 minus a square by d square. So, I have this uh, epsilon relative equal to epsilon t uh, 1 minus d square over a square uh, 1 minus a square over d square my apologies. Okay. And we want this relative velocity to be greater than epsilon naught. So, this relative velocity that I am putting in must uh, suffice some activation energy for the reaction to happen. Okay, that is a much more natural uh, choice to make. So, uh, this let me simplify, I will have uh, 1 minus should be greater than epsilon naught over epsilon t, I will just uh, juggle around a little bit and I will get uh, uh, sorry a square to be less than d square into 1 minus epsilon naught over epsilon t. So, this is pretty easy to just manipulate around, hope you can do that. Uh, now, reactive cross section is really pi a square. Okay? pi a max square. So, the maximum a for which the reaction will happen, but that will be equal to then pi d square into 1 minus epsilon naught over epsilon t. Okay. But remember what was d was this and d is equal to r a plus r b. So, I have pi r a plus r b square Okay. So, essentially what I get is that P r of epsilon t is 1 minus epsilon naught over epsilon t. Remember that sigma equal to pi r a plus r b square into P r of epsilon t that is what we proved uh, 2 or 3 slides ago. Okay. So, we get uh, now this equation, uh, this choice that P r is 1 minus epsilon naught over epsilon t if epsilon is greater than epsilon or not and if it is less than epsilon naught then no reaction will happen. Okay. So, now we will uh, do this integral 0 to f uh, infinity, uh, it, I better start with epsilon naught to infinity because 0 to e naught will be 0 just like we did in the last case, last choice d epsilon t. Uh, 1 minus epsilon naught over epsilon t epsilon t e to the power of minus beta epsilon t this becomes equal to 2 integrals integral over 1 I am just opening the bracket minus uh, in the second one you will notice that this will cancel with this. So, I will have epsilon naught uh, d epsilon t. Uh, well, this integral we have already done and uh, this is equal to uh, basically I have I will again use this with a equal to epsilon naught. Uh, I will have e to the power of minus beta epsilon naught over beta epsilon naught plus 1 over beta minus epsilon naught and this integral you can do comes out to be e to the power of minus beta epsilon naught okay, uh, divided by beta. So, uh, you go ahead and do this integral on your own, it is not very hard. So, what I notice is I take uh, this to be a constant and you notice this cancels. So, this becomes equal to e to the power of minus beta epsilon naught over beta square. Okay, so, uh, I have just uh, replaced that equation here and uh, 
put it back into this integral to get this. And so now you see what happens, something very beautiful. which is uh, what Arrhenius equation looks like. So, this is your Arrhenius factor and this is your pre exponent. Okay. Uh, so, in summary today we have looked at different reactive cross sections and defined a reactive cross section. Reactive cross section again is the area in which B has to be in such that the reaction will happen. And if I uh, do my math and calculate the reactive cross section uh, and put a condition that the reaction will happen only if the energy is above E naught, then I can uh, derive the Arrhenius equation out uh, given by uh, this term here. In the next module, uh, we will see how we can use this to solve for problems actually. Thank you very much. <laughs>